To win the Longines FEI World Cup, you have to be one of the best riders in the world and you have to be a fast rider in the jump off. And the big guys and the girls, when they go in the jump off, they don't go for second place, they always try hard. So I traveled from Belgium where I have been based for the last three years to my home farm, just for the horses to settle a little bit, do the national show before, and then jump this five-star Longines FEL World Cup. Yeah, it's nice to come home. It's uh, nice to eat Norwegian food. <laughs> but of course, when you come home, it's a certain type of pressure. People haven't seen you for a while, and, and they kind of want to expect you to do good and, and be on it. And yeah, it's much more pressure jumping here than to go to Helsinki. Equin America. Papa Roach uh, to come second last year was incredible feeling. We've been through quite a lot and we started from he was very young and built it up through it and uh, he's been a very big partner for me and uh, I'm very happy to have him. It was a real breakthrough, I think nobody thought I was ever going to be second in the World Cup but I was. And then when I managed to be good again in Helsinki, it was not only luck. And then I qualified for Omaha and I was okay in Omaha as well so, you know, that made a big change and that was nice to have a little breakthrough. It's very difficult to win this Longines FEI World Cup here. We have, uh, we're the second division, me and my brother. And my father has been trying for multiple years and I was very close last year. But it's hard and you really have to be in shape and the horses have to be in shape. And we always try our best, but we will keep trying. <laughs> You shouldn't go in this class and be casual and say, ah, I just try to do a little bit. You have to have a plan and you have to focus on it, but try to be on your job, you know, and, mm. and don't do, and, and, and do your planning good. Yeah. That's the main thing, I think. So, yeah, and I think like you go through the weekend and you try to, to be as focused as possible and try to do what gives you energy and uh, not overdo things and just do what you always do every week, not try to change your system or your way of riding and just try your best and be focused, sleep good and yeah, be prepared as best as possible. What, how do you plan to uh, the classes for the horses this weekend? What is your... So we were thinking uh, to jump Pap Roach in the 140, the first day, just a small class to get going because he's quite fresh and he needs to get his energy out. And then Mistral to do the 150, just that he has a bit bigger class in his body to get going before the World Cup normally. And uh, then I will choose Pub Roach for the Grand Prix on Saturday and Mistral for the World Cup on Sunday. That's the originally plan, and I think it's a good plan. <laughs> yeah, but this we can tell you on Sunday <laughs> if it was a good plan or not. <laughs> I had a plan that I had prepped for three months and the plan was to jump Mistral and uh, the plan didn't succeed when he got um, a hoof splint so that was really a shame and we had to change last minute. Uh, Friday I jumped uh, Equin America Pub Roach in the big class, the 150. He jumped really good, he was actually very fresh and, and feeling well and uh, I thought that of course we have a chance and we will try for the World Cup. And uh, the way he was jumping there, he felt comfortable and he felt really good in the arena and jumps were easy for him. So yeah, it was a good feeling on Friday. I love this horse, FEI TV. So Sunday morning, the day of the Longines FEI World Cup, uh, everything was going as planned. Equin America Pop Roach felt good. He was feeling fresh, relaxed and stable. I was also feeling very confident. I know Pop Roach very well and we have a lot of experience together and I hope that we would have a good day. Yeah, I get really nervous. And sometimes it's different. Sometimes I feel like he's really good shape and I get nervous because I don't want to do mistakes because I know He's in the shape, jumping good. And then some other times you get nervous because it's 
difficult, it's technical, and you feel like you maybe are not competent to do it well. And then it's other times when you're nervous because you just don't feel in shape together. So it's different type of nervousity. When I was walking the course this morning from uh, Italian course designer Elio, I was thought it was a nice course. Uh, the horses have been jumping okay here. It's not been too many clairs in the previous classes. And it was wide oxers, tall verticals, very delicate build where it was easy to make a mistake. I, I walked it and I thought it's gonna be a, a good uh, class or a good uh, for Papa Roach. But um, I walked it and we had to change the plan a little bit during the walking because people were saying you have to do one less to, to make the time because the time has been very tight during the whole week. But after watching a few, you could see that time was never an issue in this class. I was early to go, I was number five to go with uh, Papa Roach and uh, it was one of the best riders in the world that was uh, before me and for them it looked, or for me, it looked very easy when they were schooling around and it didn't look that technical. It was more technical in the end that you could see that you had to take yourself time and actually risk the time allowed a little bit to jump it clear. Yeah, it's good, it's just eight. Yeah. 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 That's it, that's good. Yeah. I meant from one to two, I actually measured nine for me, but I thought I had to do the eight. And that was a two flat stride, so that's why I had number two down. And then he jumped great during the course and I was rushing a bit for the time. And then coming out of the triple combination, I let him drift to the right and that was totally my mistake because I was thinking about the five stride after. Uh, the course was nice, it was nicely built, and the riders before me rode it beautifully, and I was just not 100% precise in the course. It looked easy eight when I looked the first riders, but they ride in a much higher speed than I am normally doing, and uh, I should have always done a nine for my horse, and uh, that you learn afterwards. <laughs> you feel disappointed, and you feel you want to do well, and you know you can do well, you know your horse can jump it and you can ride it and then of course you feel like you have disappointed the people watching and they also expect a lot because of my second place last year and when I had that first fence down I kind of got a little bit oh, gave up and then I thought two strides more no okay I can do it and keep fighting and the horse did a great job and he was trying his best but it was just me not being 100% perfect riding. But it was too flat. Yeah. And the other one, he. Yeah, it was. He judged a bit the oxygen before, and then you kind of pushed, yeah, it, pushed a bit too much in the combination. Yeah, I It was amazing when my father could jump clear. That's that's incredible feeling for him and for us as a family because. He's getting up in the age and the horse is getting up in the age and to, for him to do that in front of his home crowd is amazing and I'm very proud that he could do that here and he was even double clear so that was really good. And my boyfriend, he just got this horse back and he hasn't jumped 160 in six months and that was a big deal for him to take it back and start back again and that was a, it was a really good, it was a good boost for him to jump clear and I'm very, very happy for both of them. So when I was watching the jump off and Simon de Lester was second to go and I said no chance, nobody can beat him. He was incredible fast and he was tight everywhere. He was not risking anything to lose time. He was always perfect on every fence and I thought this is the winner. And then Richard Howley came in and I mean it was fast but he just was a fraction faster and he was riding incredible and he was really taking the risk and 
trying everything to the last fence and uh, it got paid off and we won the World Cup. It's not very often you can have so many good riders in the FAI World Cup together in one place, but I think to win here in Oslo, it's, it's not an easy game and you have to be really on it in the first place and you have to ride super fast in the jump off to win or else you don't win it.